What's good everybody, welcome back to my channel, I'm Zamir from Ecstasy Tunes. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about uh, MuseCore, it's one of the notation plugins that I use, alright? So sometimes I like to compose something light, you know, just get some idea going with MuseCore, especially if it's a film scoring or something more of a classical way of composition. And I always use MuseCore because I can use MuseCore in my laptop which is not really a super heavy kind of um, processor. Okay, it's just Ryzen 5, I believe. I like to use my laptop to compose some a melodic idea and develop it within a MuseCore. And the cool thing about MuseCore is I also have the, the sound that I want, right? For all the orchestra sound, I already have it in MuseCore. So I don't have to necessarily install other plugins, you know, other libraries. That's this reason I'm using MuseCore. Okay, now that Cubase 14, the latest version, there's some kind of improvement with the score editor. Um, I'm going to be exporting MuseCore file and then I'm going to be importing it to Cubase 14. So we're going to be exporting uh, an XML file, all right? So if you guys don't know how to do it, let me show you right now. So I'm going to open MuseCore. Okay, this is the short piece that I actually composed during Ramadan. If you don't know what, what Ramadan is, it's actually a holy month for Muslims. We kind of fast for 30 days and stuff like that. So I felt very peaceful and that's where I compose this. So if you guys notice, my name is Ludwig Amadeus Zamir. You know, that's an inspiration from my heroes, Mozart and Beethoven. Uh, this is just for fun, so it's not really my real name. Okay, so I have this short composition and it's the tempo is 90. And I have all these dynamic markings. I have all the slur uh, and all the stuff, right? And yeah, so let's see if I can export this and import it to Cubase 14 and see if it's going to be showing me the exact same notes or it's going to be a different notes, right? So let's go ahead and test them out. I'm going to go to File. I'm going to go to export and then when you come to the export you have to make sure that you have selected the main score because we're gonna have I want to have all of these files and I'm gonna use music XML right so make sure you click on that and I like to check on this open destination folder on export so export and well, I'm gonna save these in desktop so I'm gonna just name them Samir Orc. this was the original file name so let's just use that so desktop, just click on save and it's already in desktop now. So let's go to Cubase. I already fired out my Cubase, so I'm going to go to the Cubase now. And I'm going to go to file, I'm going to go to import and I'm going to go to music XML. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and find my file here, which is here, it's Zamir Orc. Double click on it and, and I'm going to click on the select folder. Okay, cool. Now I've got this tracks here right so currently my my if you notice my current project tempo is 120 and if you notice this one is 90 so let's see if it's actually oh it automatically wait what now it's 90 so when i go here okay when i click on the midi it goes to 120 I go to this side. Okay, why is that? It's kind of weird. It's kind of weird that when I click on the MIDI event, it's showing 120. But the actual project file is 90. Okay, I don't know why that happens. If anybody knows, just let me know. I'm going to press Ctrl A to select all of these MIDI events. And let's go to the score editor right now. Wow, look at that. This is basically the exact same notes. Oh, damn. Okay, let's go to the music score. Okay, I have flute one, flute two, oboe, oboe, right, oboe, oboe, clarinet in B, flat in C1. Why is that? Okay, clarinet in B, yeah. Hmm. Oh. 
it could be because I've turned on this concert pitch which is why it is showing clarinet B flat in C1 but what if I export this again Uh, let's change them to two. Save. I'm gonna go to the project again. Uh, let me go here. Let's import. Okay. So select all. Good score editor. It's clarinet in B flat. Okay, when I turn on the concert pitch here, it was showing me uh where is that? It was showing me clarinet in B flat in C1, which means it's a it's an indication that currently it's it's on concert pitch. However, if I turn off the concert pitch, it is showing me clarinet in B flat, which is the accurate the original one right damn this is so good this is definitely gonna save a lot of my time when I'm, when I'm doing orchestration okay so let's move on and find and check if all of these instruments are there so bassoon one bassoon two that's correct and then horn horn in f f okay what is this amp I don't know what that is. Trumpet, okay. Trumpet in B flat, right? Trombone, tuba, timpani, tuba, timpani, snare drum, bass drum, cymbals, all snare drum. Okay, in mu score, I have timpani cymbals. Timpani, symbols, oh, but there's an additional snare drum and bass drum. Oh, okay, okay, I know why. Here, you see, I have hidden some of these instruments here. So we have trombone, snare drum, bass drum. So even, even the hidden tracks is showing up. That's cool. So uh, okay, let's move on. Now we have harp violin solo so violin solo we have violin one two viola cello and contrabass so that's all my god this is amazing this is amazing guys this is definitely going to help me a lot okay we have this crescendo markings let's find them yes we do soft mallets okay Okay, when you go to the mi score, if you click on this, I don't know what they call this. I kind of don't remember. So we have this hot mallets, soft mallets. It's something like an articulation. So we can choose to have whichever mallets I want to have for that kind of uh, for that arrangement. So, so if I go to Cubase now, I can see that it's also showing up here. Unless if I have hidden this, okay, if I press V, oops press V it's gonna be hidden so I think it may not showing up in the in Cubase score editor okay we have this tremolo sign let's see if we, ha if we have the tremolo 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 yeah we do there we go this is fantastic guys this is fantastic okay Okay, so one of the things that I want Cubase to allow me to do is, you know, when I'm writing orchestration, right, sometimes there's a lot of technique that I use, you know, so I like to copy maybe the first, first melodic phrase and I may want to repeat it in with another instrument, right? So from flute one, I may want to play the same melody but in a different with a different instrument so maybe clarinet in b flat right so if i want to copy this i'm gonna i'm gonna i want to paste it here i can't do that right i've already copied this okay i press ctrl c and i'm gonna go ahead and select this part here ctrl v nothing happens right i really wish cubase would have that features 
because that is a very important feature, guys, right? Okay, so that's it. I don't want to drag this video too long. So I think I really like this update. Really good job, Steinberg. Keep doing this. And also please listen to some of my suggestions so that it keeps getting better, all right? So there you go. That's how you use MuseScore and Cubase together to write great music, all right? So if you guys find this video helpful, please make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, smash the like button, and share this video to everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.